grow in somebody like me who doesn't get drunk and do all that. I'm a great mom. I'm a wife. I don't sin and stuff all the time. I'm not perfect. But you're throwing someone like me off of religion because of the way you're treating and judging everybody else because I believe to each their own. People should live their own life and you shouldn't be concerned with what other people are doing unless it's affecting She doesn't think she deserves hell. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm saying that when I lay in bed at night, I pray and say I'm sorry for the wrong things I've done. But I don't think it's my job to say, hey, because this person is gay. What if Jesus said, make it yourself? He said that in the Bible. He said, go in the highways and byways and compel, in the words of force, compel them to come in. If I'm going to do a job, I would rather try to help people who are going to bed hungry at night. Or children who are killing themselves because people like I've done you that too. don't oh, think they're living on the You're right blaming their suicides on no, me. No, 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 no. I just want to know. suicides on the assumption that society has that there's only one right way to be. But, when we've got this campus preaching the last three and a half, four years, almost every time we've come, almost every time we've preached, the issue of suicide comes up and we tell them emphatically, if you kill yourself with the last act you do, you have no hope of salvation. You've died by sin and you'll wake up in fire. Does God have a plan for each one of us? Absolutely. That's part of the intro to your question. And the second part of your question was, how do we have free will? Well, God has a plan in that on Judgment Day, the, the final plan, God will judge those who have not humbled themselves and confessed their sins and trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And His plan is to now condemn the sinner. Now, that plan can change in that, uh, as far as you know, you have limited knowledge, so, so do I. That plan can change in that you submit to God's will. And when you submit to God's will, God will show you mercy. Now, God knows who's going to finish properly. God knows who's going to die, when they're going to die, and in what spiritual condition they die in. So he knows the beginning from the end. But poor knowledge does not mean God is planning for you to go to hell. I'm so sorry. God doesn't want you to go to hell. I'm so sorry. God does not desire the destruction of the wicked, but they turn and live. Okay. But that you turn and live. And if you don't turn. You'll have eternal it's damnation. That is God's plan. Yes. Some Christians will say, God has a wonderful plan for your life. He does. Yeah, He does. If you repent and abide in Him, surely it's a wonderful plan for you to be a part of the true vine producing good fruit of righteousness in your life for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Where do you get what verse is that, young lady? Where well, do you get that nonsense? What did you know, though? Because where do you get that nonsense? Your friend has a Bible. Yeah, friend he pulled this Bible out of his pocket. See, I think it. many people have this bright bumper sticker theology, like, oh, I'm not perfect, just forgiven. And the Bible says to Christians, be you perfect, as I am perfect. That's a direct command by Jesus. To be you morally blameless. To be obedient children in all your conduct. First Peter chapter 1 says. But most of you defend sin unto death. And you die in your sin and go to hell for your sin. Can I ask you a question? If we're all going to hell and we're not forgiven, then why don't we all get baptized? Again, this young lady is making a supposition. If we all go to hell, 
I never said we're all going to hell. At least two people on this campus as of right now, that's Brother Tracy and Brother John, are not going to hell. Why? Because we abide in Jesus Christ. We are branches abiding in the vine. We love him and we produce fruit for his glory. Good fruit. Holy fruit. Godly sorrow leads to repentance, to salvation, not to be regretted. But the sorrow of the world leads to destruction. The sorrow of the world leads to destruction. So when you say, God, I'm sorry if you exist, that is not godly sorrow. When you add godly sorrow, young lady, who said I could do that? You said it last year. I didn't say you could have sex before marriage. Sex before marriage is fornication. Oh yes, I admitted that I did. And I was in sin. And I was going to hell for my sin. Even as a lukewarm Christian. I think you need to. Well, I'm not lukewarm now. I'm on fire, hallelujah. Holy Spirit governs my heart and my mind. And you just don't like the Holy Spirit amongst you because you live in your darkness, which is sin. So God has appointed this day which He will examine the motives of your heart. Where you live, each one of you. You're gonna. No one's gonna die. We're all gonna die. This is a statement of fact. I'm not threatening anyone. What are you talking about? It's still in darkness. First John two nine. Look at Bobby back there. Whoever is in light, hates his brother. Is still in darkness. I agree. Well, stop hating us. Stop hating us. You hypocrites. We're loving you. I never said I believed in Jesus Christ. You're sitting here preaching hate to everyone. You are not a Christian. You are a sinner. I'm shocked. I'm just shocked at your language. Your language is so hateful and so intolerant. You need to go take a breath. You need to go take a breath. But only if you've been instructed by the Holy Spirit. So you call only if you walk okay, in the Holy Spirit. You sinners you think you can interpret the Bible and say you don't believe it? That is nonsensical. It's fallacious and illogical. I don't believe the Bible, but the Bible says do not judge. They don't come down here and see Gotcha. I like fallacious. Again, what is your definition of hatred? campus and you haters who hate God, they don't say, I call bullshit. I'm about to show you. I call bullshit. Show me. Okay, can I get a Bible? Can you show me in the Bible? They're the one right in his pocket. There you go. Can I your Bible? Right in his pocket. There's a Bible. Here's the Here's the evidence against you hypocrites. Ready? Can I read the Bible? How we hypocrites yet? You don't want to hear calling who endures to the end shall be saved. One verse. Everybody's getting a You will be hated by all for my name's sake. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Christians shall be hated by all for Jesus' name's sake. We've been here today preaching Jesus, 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 and you sinners hate the truth. Who is Jesus? <laughs> Thank you.
question today. So Brian asked the question just so you all know the context of my answer. It says if, if heaven is supposed to be a perfect and blissful place, how is it going to be that way if we all show up there living in sin, basically? Well, the Bible says that where Jesus Christ taught that we're supposed to stop sinning now as evidence of our love for God. So as a Christian, for me to continue to lie and continue to lust and continue to steal and fornicate, these things show God that I am not actually abiding in Christ. I'm not an obedient child of Christ, but I'm a disobedient son of the devil. So we get to heaven when the saints of God enter the kingdom of God when Jesus Christ says, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into your Father's rest. When he says that, he knew long before exactly who obeyed and exactly who did not obey. And to, to many, he will say, to you who work lawlessness, depart from me. I never knew you. Those that work sin in your life, your practice in sin, Jesus will say, leave me. I never knew you. It sounds real loving, what he just said, huh? Uh, we don't pray on the street court. We pray before we got here. You, you, you all automatically you already know it's not there. Right? Yeah. We don't pray to be seen. So no, I'm not we've already done our prayer. I know. I'm, I didn't say that's your motive. I'm just telling you why. I, I appreciate you would pray. Go over there, pray in the closet. Yeah, and yourself. I appreciate your prayer. Okay. So I'm not what's trying. To, huh? What's your name? John. John. I'm Kyle. Nice to you, Kyle. You want to be? Don't let, don't let anybody steal this from you, okay? All right. Hey. I was about ready to I'm joking. Kyle, right? Yeah. That's me, man. Yeah. Uh, my name's Tracy. Tracy? All right. Thanks, guys. I'm sure it has another beautiful, very good spiritual question. That's right. Um, so, since we're in America, Brother John! What up, bro? Oh, we're going to pound it. It's a lot more crazy here than it is, let's say, uh, Somewhere in the Middle East with their practices like well, Islam, somewhere else. So that seems like it's very unlikely that if you were born there, you'd believe in Jesus Christ. So how can they be you know, blamed for their disbelief? It's a very complex uh, series of questions. All right, listen up, listen up. Brian asked a really good question. Brian supposed that uh, in America we have 80% are Christian. Now, we'll just take this group as a sample. How many people here are loving, obeying the gospel in Jesus Christ? Raise your hand. college campus. It's going to be a lot more liberal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now ask if they're still sinning. We'll say 20. We'll say 20 out of a couple hundred. Ask if they're still sinning, brother. I know the crowds. I know what they mean. You're saying the whole, but my supposition is Christians come to this campus just as much as anybody else. So they would be a good demographic of the society. So your supposition is 80% is incorrect. I got to Okay, 
Okay. Are you arguing that there's more or less I'm going to deal with that in a minute. The first thing that I want to deal with with Brian's point is that, in, and America gives the appearance that there's lots of Christians here. Step down, listen carefully. Settle down, listen carefully. America gives the impression, because of all the buildings called churches all over the place, and all the, the sheeple people that go into those buildings and profess the name of Christ, and the other six days they live their lives like little devils, they, uh, that is not a good demographic. Now, let me give you a, well, pay attention. Let me give you a, a very striking example. The Billy Graham, the Billy Graham Association, he's, he's proclaimed to be evangelist for the world, admits that 90% of the people that make professions and his crusades a year later are not found in church. Well, let's take that to the natural conclusion, by it. Let's suppose I had a parachute rigger shop. I had a parachute rigger shop. I put a big billboard out in front of my business and say, listen, I'm an excellent parachute rigger. I have a 90% failure rate. Now, how much more important is telling the truth of Christ? Well, if you're telling me, I'm not going to question. And if I have a parachute rigger, and nine out of ten people jump out of the plane and fall to their death, then I shouldn't be a parachute rigger. And if Billy Graham is the preacher for the world, and nine out of ten people fall out of their faith and go to hell forever, he should not be preaching anymore. Is it enough to the individual Jesus person? So you know, I'm gay and I believe in God. Is that okay with you? Can I say you God? Yeah. I eat pussy and I love God. Is that okay with you? I love God and I eat pussy and I'm covered in tattoos and I'm piercing and I got my hair cut off. Is that okay with you? Can I still worship your God? Am I not good enough because I fuck girls? Is that a problem? You're stumping me. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I am too. I think I am too. Yeah, I'm over your here. mind. You almost hit me. God loves me. I never I know I trust team. you as an effort. Even yeah, though you're a lesbian. I never addressed you as an mf -er, even though you're a lesbian. I just uh, talk down on you because I find you uh, That's so lesser intelligent That's so than tolerant. me. Get That's the fuck so out tolerant. of my face. Oh, oh, you're scared. Oh, you are come preach to college kids trying to better themselves and get an education. And you're preaching about condemning these good people. Let's see, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Yeah. God bless you, God bless you. Jesus loves queers, guys. God has a benevolent love for homos and heteros. But you hetero perverts and you homo perverts alike, you hate God! I'm sorry, I didn't know it. Now just give it a minute for things to calm down a little bit. What's your name? Congo. What's your name? Congo. Congo? Am I hearing that right? Congo? No. How are you doing? What's your name again? I'm sorry. Brother Travis. I You have to understand, I deal with a lot of students, okay? And not just the students, people out in the streets. Yeah, I kind of remember. You still have it? Where, where is it? It's on my backpack. I ran here. I didn't have my backpack. Oh, okay. Well, you'll be coming back, so wear it out. No doubt. Don't be ashamed of your no corn pit. I have a question. Anything. It doesn't have to be in front of the crowd. Oh, I 
I'm here to preach the crowd, so are you, are you saved, you're Christian? No. no. But, um, how old are you? 54. <laughs> well, I'll be 54 this year. I just turned 30. <laughs> what? I just turned 30. Okay. <laughs> what, my, what my real question is, is hey, you're 50, you're, you know, 54 years old. You seem like you're a reasonably intelligent guy. I mean, you can have an argument and stuff. I mean, like, why aren't you out working? Well, uh, because this is my primary work now. Uh, I do work. I have other things that I do, but this is, I want to be about my father's business. Now, you may not understand that as an unbeliever, but as a Christian, so Jesus said, Jesus, I want to be about my father's business. What the father taught me, I teach you. What Jesus taught me, I'm trying to teach the students. Because I want them to come to a, a saving understanding and knowledge and faith in Jesus Christ. It's more than just accept Jesus and you go to heaven. you got a ticket now. But you get paid, right? No, I don't get paid. No, but I, I pay to come here. I pay the gas money. I forfeit my time that I could be making a lot of money. You know, I, I had a career that I could be making six figures right now. Well, why aren't you not doing that, man? Well, because the money is not my motive. My motive is Jesus Christ and His glory and people to come to His kingdom. That's my motive. I just kind of figured that a 54-year-old man you know, be a little bit more. A little wet. A little wet. A little wet. It just seems <laughs> below you. Okay. I mean, like, now you're assuming I'm immature. What do you base that on? What? You're 54 years old. You choose not to work. And you're out here telling me. No, I already explained to you, man. I have other work I do, so I do choose the work. Okay. But this is my primary work. And what I'm saying is, is you have a real talent to talk to groups of people. And maybe you could use that. He doesn't think the gospel's worthy of your time. No. Well, I mean, right. what I'm talk saying to is people about how they can better their life instead of trying to... Preaching the gospel is just a waste of time that. for him. Oprah does that and makes millions of dollars. I'm not asking for any money, and yet I'm trying to get people to understand the truth of the Bible that, number one, they reject, number two, their pastors aren't really telling you. Are you Christian? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. I just... I already told you that I got lots of skills. I can be making six figures right now. Well, why aren't you? I don't care about money. I care about the souls of these students. Are you Christian? But, but I mean, like, do you see how, like, a negative, thing, like, the negative reaction you get? Wait, are you Christian? Right? And I've already given Bible verses to support my view that because Jesus was hated, his servants, his slaves, his love slaves will be hated too. Is he Christian? So because I love Jesus and because I promote Jesus, people hate me. Because I demote wickedness and sin, I call people out of sin, and I call them to practice righteousness before a holy God. Most people, I won't say all, because we've already had a few people say thanks for being here again, we appreciate that. But Are most you people have the message that the Bible gives. I just want well, to know if you're right. oh, Can somebody on. ask him if he's a Christian? I assume you believe in the New Testament, but do you believe all the things in the Old Testament? Well? Another great question from Brian. Brian, you are spectacular today. Brian, can you ask him if he's a Christian? Shining in his intelligence and his thoughtfulness as he asks good questions. Are you Catholic? So Brian said, uh, Do we believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament? Is there a difference? You know, is God do you believe in God? Good question. Well, in the Old Testament, uh, God gives a history from the beginning until the Messiah shows up. And in the Old Testament outlines the predictions of how the Messiah would look, where he'd be born in, in Bethlehem, and they'd be born of a virgin. What verse is that? He'd go to Egypt, he would die on the cross, no bones would be broken, he'd raise on the third Bible day. Right there. What verse All is that? these things were no, 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 prophesied no, 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 about. I need a verse! Mr. Preacher, can we get a verse? Oh, uh, you can stop being rude to Brian. Oh, wait. I love you. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian. I love you. Yes, the God of the Old Testament is the same God of the New, but he conducted wise warfare with all the enemies of Israel around him. And guess what? He was victory! Boom! Boom! Wipe out the Hittites! Wipe out the pair! I mean, just slaughter them! Man, woman, child, cattle! Take it all out! And in those times, 
that Israel did not obey God were a time of cursing. Now, so, so God recorded history in the Old Testament. But now in the New Testament, his character is not changed. It's the same God. He's still just. He's still going to kill and throw him to hell most people. But he wants to offer mercy to everyone by faith in Jesus Christ. I'm just asking about the rules in the Old Testament that a lot of us are not okay. Slavery and killing people who are not... Well, if it was me killing people on my own volition, that's absolutely wrong. But the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill.